Hey everyone, and welcome to the devlog video for the RPG Combat. In this video, I am super excited to finally share with you guys a, a cool new feature that I've added called the Combat Profile. And the main idea here is to make it as easy as possible for you guys to add your own custom logic to the AI. So instead of having the logic hard-coded in the, in the attack component and you guys have to go there and overwrite a function or having it as part of the behavior tree, what I've done is I've created an, a separate component, which you'll see in a second, called the combat profile that only holds the logic that the AI will use to determine which ability to cast next. And you can put anything in that component as long as you return the right type of ability. Uh, and that allows you to make super simple behavior or very, very complex behavior. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show you guys today. But before we do that, uh, as a precursor, I want to show you guys what I've done with the melee attack. So if you guys have seen my previous video about the magic system, you'll remember that the spells themselves, you can see here at the bottom, are uh, their own class. So if I go here to create its spells, and let me just open, let's just go open like the fireball, for example you see that they are their own uh, actor class. They're, they're children of a special uh, um, base class called uh, BP Spell Base. And here you have the name of the spell, an icon, which it can be used later, a mana cost, a max range, and a bunch of options for the spell. Um, similarly, what I've done for melee is I've created uh, separate classes for melee abilities same way as the spells now so now if i open an attack for example let's say um, let's just open this one melee um, troll light attack 2 it'll have the same type of options now you have an actual name you have an icon even though it's not used now it'll be used later you have a damage you have a stamina cost which is kind of a hint of what's coming next this is not implemented yet but i've been talking to some of you guys on discord uh, on how to add a resource system for melee, right? The counterpart to mana, and I've decided that I'm gonna be using stamina. So eventually, each ability will have their own stamina cost. You have equip requirements here, and you have basically everything else that you've, you've seen before, right? You can apply status effects, AOE options, a knockback, etc. Then you have the actual animation per ability, and then you have some sound options and a category here. Uh, and these categories are going to be used in the combat profile. So here you see that we have a few categories like light single target, heavy single target, heavy area damage, special attack, defense. And these categories are pretty much arbitrary. You can easily add more categories if you wanted to. But these categories are going to be used by the combat profile to tell the AI what kind of attack to perform. Uh, and that's the reason kind of why I wanted to show you guys this. Spells have their own categories, even though right now it's not part of the class, which I think I will move that uh, later. Uh, but if, I just wanted to show you, if, if I go back to the troll base class, to the magic attacks here, and I open the spell uh, list, you'll see that we have a spell class here, we have an equip slot, and we also have a category here, single target damage. And you can see that the spells have way more categories than melee because obviously there's so many different types of spells, uh, area of effect, heal, offensive and defensive buffs, crowd control, summon, special attack, transformation, teleportation, etc. Right? Again, it's the same principle. You're gonna use your combat profile to return to the, to the AI what, what category of spell the AI needs to uh, cast. Um, so, to uh, give you guys a quick example, I don't want to uh, talk too much. I think it's easier if you see it. You'll see that now, right here, we have our AI selected. And if I select the uh, melee attack uh, component, you'll see that we have a combat profile uh, selection here. And I'm going to go ahead and, and choose the first one, melee basic one. And now that I've chosen this class, I'm actually going to add it as a separate component here. So I'm going to type profile. And you can see that we have a few selected. So I'm going to select the same one as from that list, Melee Basic 1. And let's open it up to see exactly what is in here. So if I go here and click on Edit, 
you'll see that we have a function called select melee attack. Uh, you can add your own logic here and you'll return either an ability index or an actual category for the melee attacks. Uh, so you can do whatever you want inside this function and all you have to do is return either an ability index and this index is the equivalent of uh, the abilities here on the list. So right here by default I have five abilities, the ones that I'm showing you guys. Light attack right hand, or light attack left hand, heavy attack, spin attack, and bash. So you could either write your logic and return an index, index 0 through 4, and say no. If this happens, uh, do index 1. If this other thing happens, do index 4. Or you could return a category, and based on the category, then the AI would do something. Like these two spells here are light attacks. This spell is a heavy attack. This spell is AoE. And this spell is a special attack. And if I open those classes, you'll see that that's the category that I've chosen for these guys. So either way, you have those options. So in this very first profile, all I'm doing is the simplest logic possible. I'm checking the owner's health, the NPC's health, and I'm saying if the health is above 30%, I want you to perform a, a light single target attack. But if it falls below 30%, do a heavy attack. And the heavy attack is going to be the overhand attack. So if I do that and I, and I click a play here, I'm going to get close here. You'll see that the light attacks are going to be the ones that are swinging left to right. And you can see that it's going to it's going to alter between those two attacks that you're seeing there because those are the only attacks that are categorized as light attacks. If I damage him a little bit more. Now he should be below that 30% uh, threshold. Now he's going to be doing only overhead attacks, as you can see there. Because that's the only attack that's marked as overhead. Very simple. And I just noticed that I had this debug thing um, put here. So I'm going to delete that uh, because I don't want to annoy us. Uh, now let's take a look at another combat profile that's a little bit more complicated. So if we come here and we change the profile to basic 2, and we're going to add this guy. Profile melee basic 2, and we want to open this guy. Now you see that we have a slightly more complicated logic. <clears throat> we're checking if the NPC's health is above 60%. Then pick a random attack between light single target or heavy AOE, area damage. That's going to be the spin attack. So if it's anywhere be, uh, above 60%, either the light attacks or the AOE attacks. If it's between 60% and 30%, you're going to do a heavy attack, single target. That's the overhead. And if you're below 30%, whoops, then you're going to do a special attack. So pretty similar to the other one, but slightly more complex. Instead of doing one check, I'm doing two checks. And in here, I'm basically choosing a random category. But at the end of the day, notice that all I'm returning is the category. And that's all that matters. So I'm not using the index, by the way. I'm going to show you a case where that, where that is uh, working. So if I come back here, I make sure that the category is basic two. And I have basic two here. And if I click play here. Let's see what kind of attack we get here. We see that we have the spin attack, and that's one of the random attacks if it's above 60%. And the spin attack, again, I'm, I'm going to die, so one second. Sorry for that. If I hit this guy a little bit more, maybe here... Is between 60% and 30% and that's why it's doing all the overhead attacks as you can see that it's just gonna be doing that overhead attack because it's the only category uh, that I have here and if I damage him a little bit more now he's below 
what is he gonna do? He's gonna do he's gonna do the special attack, which is the bash that you just saw there, and knock me down. So you could see how it's following through the logic, and in this case, it's only looking at the health of the NPC. Now, because this is its own component with a with an event graph, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can do traces, you can spawn uh, um, blueprint classes, you can pretty much do anything you want. As long as you return either an ability index or a category, um, the AI will know exactly what it needs to do, right? So that's the cool thing is that that now you have the option of um, basically doing whatever you want. So let's make a quick change here and let's actually make it magical. So if we wanted to change this guy, let's see here, from melee to magic, I'll press play here. We're going to use the, a basic combat profile for magic, and that's going to be, let's see here, yeah, combat profile magic simple one. And I go here, magic simple one. And if we check it out, you'll see that this is similar to the other one. I'm basically saying if the health of the AI is above 50%, do single target damage. If it's below 50%, use a heal. Obviously, you kind of have to make sure that you have the right uh, spells. So if, we go, if I go back here and I look at the spells, I see that I have a fireball, which is single target. And I have a heal, uh, which is category heal. Great. So with that said, if I click play here, You'll see that right now it's shooting fireballs at me because his health is above 50%. And you can see it's again casting a fireball because his health is high. But if I come here and I get his health low, notice that it's now casting a heal because his health is below 50%. And it actually, <laughs> it actually healed me, funny enough, because the target was me on the spell. Uh, that's really funny. Um, we can change that real quick. Let's see here. Self. <laughs> and if I click play, fireball. Go ahead and do the fireball and hit me. But now, because the health is less than 50%, he's going to cast the heal and it's going to cast it to self. And you can see that it healed himself. And now that it's healed and the health is about 50%, now he's casting a fireball. So you can see that obviously there's a lot of things working together here. Uh, like the heal, for example, had the wrong uh, target. So it just kind of ended up healing me. So I have to think about a way of, of making that a little bit easier. Uh, maybe determine the target dynamically for buffs, something like that. I, I haven't I haven't figured out a way to do that. But because the heal was uh, the delivery was uh, target, not self, it ended up healing me. Right. Um, all right. So now for fun, the last thing I want to show you guys is um, what you can do with these profiles. Right. So. Uh, let's go back to the magic and let's choose the magic trap profile here and the magic trap profile let's just add it here magic trap you'll see what it does in just a second some of you guys have seen it I posted a, an unlisted video on discord but now that you understand what the profile is let's just hit play and see what happens here Well, actually, you know what? Why don't we just take a look at the profile first? So here, what I'm doing is I am checking the distance between the player and the target, the NPC and the target. And if it is higher than 2,000 units, then I want you to return ability index 0. If you are closer than 2,000 two units, within 2,000 units, then I'm either going to set a trap, and that's going to be ability index 1, or return ability index 2, 
when you, uh, after the trap is set. So in this example, I'm returning an index and you can see here that I have usability index ticked and I'm returning an ability index here. And if you look at the ability index, you'll see what happens here, right? But basically this is what happens. If I click play and I'm close by, this guy is going to summon this cage and after that, it's going to summon a uh, AOE fire attack, as you can see here. But I could easily change the, the distance. So if I wanted to say the pool distance is 2,000, let's say that I wanted the pool distance, or actually even easier here. Let's just move the guy a little bit farther here. If I click play, my distance is automatically uh, higher than 2000 uh, he's gonna you can see here hold on let's just change it back to a thousand here so you can see I still have to kind of work out uh, some of the uh, the code here oops oh I see there you go. I, I didn't move the right guy here. There we go. Summon the cage. And then he's going to do the AOE damage there. Basically trapping me. And he's going to basically continue to summon the cage because I am still very close to him. If I wanted to start farther than that, he should be doing the pull, but I think he's trying to reach me. Nope, summon cage. Oh, there you go. I, we ran into a little bug. Um, if you saw the video, you, you, you saw exactly what the uh, the code was meant to be. But basically, if you're farther than, than the, the pull ability, it'll actually pull you. In this case, it's a thousand. Um, and if not, it will uh, then cast the cage and then do the AOE damage. So it's just an example of um, how to use the uh, the combat profile. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna fiddle with it right now to make the video very long, but um, you get the point, right? Uh, you can cast your abilities. But there's something interesting that I wanted you guys to see, right? If I select my troll here and I go to my magic abilities, notice that we have a fireball and we have a heal. We don't have this cage ability or the fire ability. So how is it casting that ability? And that's something that I've added also recently. You can actually specify a spell list or an ability list within the combat profile itself. So if I come here and, and show inherited variables, you'll see that we have a few additional variables that are inherited from the base class. There's a boolean here called force ability list. And if you make this true, then you can specify your own spell list here. And you can see here that we have pool target as index zero, summon cage as index one, and fire nova as index two, which correspond to these indexes here perfectly. And what happens is if you have this boolean selected, on begin play, the combat profile will automatically replace the abilities in the NPC to match whatever abilities you have here. And that, uh, that means that it's either going to be spell or melee abilities automatically. And that allows you to have abilities based on the combat profile, which I think is really, really handy. Because now, you don't even have to worry about changing the abilities in the NPC itself. You could have just default abilities on the NPC in case you don't want to have a combat profile and for every single combat profile you could have your own spell list so you can have a combat profile for healers a combat profile for whatever warlocks warriors whatever it is and it'll automatically set the right spell so that so the um, npc can do its thing um so yeah um oh one more thing and i know this video is getting a little too long but one more thing i wanted to show you guys uh, is lists here so if you see I have under abilities I have the spells and melee but I have what I call lists 
And this is something uh, that I picked up from one of you guys in the community. This is used in Skyrim uh, in the modding uh, tool called the Creation Kit, but it's really, really handy. And it's basically a way of adding random spells or abilities or weapons to NPCs. So you can see that I have a list file here with a few uh, examples. So for example, I have here a weapons list. And you can see that if I open this BP list random weapons, it's just a simple array with uh, two different weapons, troll hammer and troll axe, right? I'm just gonna show you this one. I'm not gonna show the spells because this video is getting a little too long. But the idea here is that if you wanted to add randomness, you could do it here, right? So if I wanted to, to come to the melee, let me just go ahead and make this melee again. One second. Attack mode is melee, and now I go to the melee component. Here, notice that we have equipped weapons, and you can actually select the weapons for the left and the right. You've seen that before. But now I have random list for the right hand and for the left hand. And now I can choose a random list. And I'm going to choose the same one, trolls, here. And on begin play, the troll will get a random weapon from that list. So I'm going to hit, hit, hit play here. You can see that now it has an axe and uh, mm -hmm. this other one here. So you can see. So this way, you can see now it has two, uh, two axes. So you can see here that you can easily add random items or spells by just adding them to the list. And the same thing is true for spells, for example. And I haven't done melee abilities, but you'll be able to do that as well. So if you go to magic attacks, for example, you'll see that here under spell list, there is now a random spell list here. And you can see that I have a few examples like direct damage, dots, and healing. So again, if if you wanted to do combat profiles, you can do it that way. Or if you wanted to add just random spells, just make things a little more interesting, you can do that for spells as well. So that's where I wanted to show you guys about lists. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm working on a lot of different things at the same time. So I have to do a lot of testing to make sure that things aren't as buggy. <laughs> uh, but regardless, I hope you get the idea. Uh, I'm super excited for combat profiles and I do plan to add some really cool demos when this thing gets a little bit more advanced. Maybe like an actual level where you where you go on a dungeon crawl, uh, um, ending with a boss fight with, with some really, really cool abilities. Again, because of the combat profile, I can write some complex logic to do a ton of stuff. And because we have so many different spells, you can go crazy. You can summon abilities, you can teleport around. You can pull the target, you can trap it, you can do pretty much whatever. Uh, uh, so yeah, I'm super excited. And um, yeah, what do you think about the, the combat profiles? Do you like the idea? Anything else that I'm missing that would be cool to add? Please let me know in the comments below or message me on Discord. I'm really uh, looking forward to your answers. Again, this is really, really early and I'm taking a lot of your suggestions um, to heart. So any comments are really, really appreciated. So thank you guys so much, and I'll talk to you in the next video.